Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Maze MTG here with another Deck Tech video. This time it's a bit off our regular schedule, but that's because of the new Commence the Endgame Counters event that's just gone live on MTG Arena. So this event is kind of a normal best of one standard match. However, at the beginning of each end step, any creatures on the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter receive an additional plus one plus one counter, and any of your planeswalkers receive an extra loyalty counter. So kind of similar to proliferating there, but if you have nothing to proliferate onto, instead what you do is you amass one and create a 1-1 one, one zombie army creature token, and because that will have a plus one plus one counter on it, on subsequent turns that means that will be a creature at least to receive the counter moving forwards. So the deck we're looking at for the event it's a 60 card list that Joe Spanier, found Omega, posted on Twitter as kind of the starting place for the format, and it's what we're going to be playing a couple of games of tonight. So in the one drop slot, we've got four Pelt Collector. Whenever another creature we control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's got greater power, we get a plus one plus one counter on Pelt Collector, and that will then start it proliferating. In addition to Pelt Collector, we've got four ch uh, sorry three Chamber Sentry, four Ugin's Conjurant, both of which are X casting cost creatures that we'd like to come in with one plus one plus one counter by spending one mana, or in the case of Chamber Sentry, we can spend green white to bring it in as a 2 2. Ugin's Conjurant is technically a play for any turn. In both cases, we just want to deploy them early to start ticking up counters rather than really paying attention to any extra text on the card. Our two drops we have four Incubation Druid. Being able to immediately put a plus one plus one counter on Incubation Druid means that rather than needing to adapt, immediately it's tapping to produce additional mana, which is an absurd amount of ramp. In addition, both Pollen Bright Druid and Whatley's Raptors um, are cards in green-white that allow you to proliferate immediately when they enter the battlefield. The rest of the deck is rounded out with 12 Planeswalkers, 4 creatures and some lands. So in terms of the Planeswalkers, we have 4 Zhang Yanggu Wildcrafter. Um, Xiang turns your creatures with plus one plus one counters into mana dorks in their own right if they aren't already, and the minus can also allow you to distribute additional minus one minus one counters. Ajani the Great Hearted, same theme. The minus two gives additional loyalty to your planeswalkers, plus one plus one counters on your creatures, again to start ticking up with the static effect that's in play due to the game mode we're playing. Giving your creatures vigilance is nothing to sniff at either, and if you do need to gain some life, a Johnny can reach quite high loyalty just by plussing to keep you in the game against an aggressive deck. Our last Planeswalker, one of the best Planeswalkers in Standard right now, four copies of Nissa who shakes the world. Nissa's plus one animates lands with plus one plus one counters, so they will also start proliferating off the game's static ability. Her ramp ability has already been demonstrated to be a potent effect, and she will get to ultimate a lot easier as well when she's receiving an additional loyalty counter at the beginning of the end step as well. When you think plus one plus one counters, standard, what do you think as a creature? Biogenic Ooze. Five mana curve topper, powerful mid-range threat, immediately creates a second ooze when it comes into play, and the beginning of your end step gives you another trigger that's going to put even more plus one plus one counters on those oozes. And for four mana, easy to achieve with Nissa, Zhang Yang Gu, your incubation druids ramping you, you can create additional oozes to start powering up as well. The mana base is pretty straightforward. Um, we've got two planes, 11 forests for 13 basic lands, 23 mana in all, with four sun petal grove and four temple garden rounding out the mana base. Skewing more heavily towards green than white, this is for the double green and the casting cost of our spells, and the fact that white's really just being played for Huatli's Raptor and that proliferate, and Ajani the Great Hearted is our four mana planeswalker. So the deck looks interesting, definitely set up to abuse the mechanics of this particular format, so we're going to take it into some games now and see how that goes. Okay, so our actual first game in the Commence the Endgame event. We have a pretty keepable 7, our opponent is on the play, they've kept their 7 as well. Let's see how it goes. Let me just read this emblem again. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control with a counter and a loyalty. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what I thought it said. So opponent gets to a mass. What we're going to do is just make a chamber sentry on 1. Uh, pay one. So this will become a 2-2 at the end of our turn, which actually outsizes their amass creature. They may have Tyrant Scorn or something to kill it. I don't really know what the decks in this format are doing. So the all guild gate mana base for our opponent. So our sentry is outsizing them. So we're definitely just going to deploy Huatli's Raptor here, proliferate onto the chamber sentry, which will get to attack for three. Then next turn we'll get to play Xiang Yanggu, put a counter onto Huatli's Raptor. 
which will again allow it to get through this 2-2 and also mean that Xiang is protected as he goes back up to three counters. Opponent plays Ragdos Guildgate, so they are four colors, it looks like. Um, is there any reason to just use these creatures for mana? The answer is no. We'll play Xiang, put a counter on Raptor, straight to combat. We have Vigilance on the Raptor, so no reason to hold back. We'll see if opponent has any instant speed interaction for two mana. But our creatures are outside Lightning Strike range, so it would need to be a combat trick or something. Opponent does seem to have... it was a chum block. Do they have damage? Not at all. So I feel pretty ahead, unless opponent's going to play a Wrath, but it would have to be something like Ritual of Soot. And a Gateway Plaza does not facilitate that. Opponent does amass, they receive a chum blocker. Um, what are we doing this turn? Well, Raptor has Vigilance, so I think what we're going to do is there's no reason to play this Ooze pre-combat. We're going to jam in with both our creatures, and then after combat, if nothing bad happens, our plan is to shock in the Temple Garden and make a Biogenic Ooze with our mana. And then what we could also do is... Put a plus one plus one counter on the token, so the token receives a proliferate off the static effect as well. Oh, they stack like... yeah, they stack in an awkward order with Biogenic Ooze, that's good to know. So in that case, it appears that the uh, Biogenic Ooze trigger goes on the stack on top of the game-based effect. So if your oozes don't have a counter, you will only get one rather than two. But we do win game one, so that was enjoyable, I'll see you all for game two. Okay, straight back into the queue for another game with green-white proliferate in the Commence the Endgame event. So, this hand... Hmm, I guess we get an Amass counter on one, which we'll get to Raptor on two on two. And then Jiang is a pretty reasonable curve still. It's not one of the fastest starts we could have. Duress is going to take one of our Planeswalkers. Presumably Jiang. Oh, Nissa, okay. So opponent Amasses. We draw a backup Nissa. We just get to play land and pass. But if we get to proliferate onto our counter, we kind of get to break serve. Sorry, proliferate onto our zombie. So opponent's looking to trade here. I'm not looking to block. What I am looking to do is play the Sun Petal Grove, deploy a Raptor, proliferate onto my 2-2, and then attack for 1. It then grows into a 3-3 three, three end of turn. Opponent's turn. Opponent has nothing and passes. That's unfortunate for them. Uh, we'll play a forest. We'll make Zhang here. Because if Zhang puts a counter onto Raptor, as long as Tyrant Scorn doesn't happen, this is pretty reasonable for us. Yep. Maybe we shouldn't have attacked with the 3-3 just to have it grow bigger. That may have been hasty. But opponent is kind of under a lot of pressure, especially seeing as they have been mana screwed for a few turns. Ashiok. Ashiok is an interesting one. Does get to mill us. Would technically get to mill indefinitely if unmolested. But um, I think what we just do here is attack. So we're going to put a counter on the raptor. We're going to kill the Ashiok in combat. Um, then we're going to use our five mana. How are we going to use our five mana, though? We don't have any Temple Gardens, otherwise Nyssa would potentially be the play. I think it's just make a Biogenic Ooze this turn. And just have the Ooze start proliferating. So again, unfortunate ordering of triggers means the Ooze only get a single counter. But next turn they'll start doubling. Opponent does find a fourth mana, so maybe something will befall this Biogenic Ooze. Opponent has a Khan. Khan goes up. Our opponent can have Not Teferi, eh? Can have Not Teferi. Okay, so we draw another land. So they're at 15, so we can just kill them with uh, Nissa, right? Yeah. So Nissa Animate Land Attack is exactly 15. So that is another opponent vanquished with Green White Proliferate. Okay then, and we'll record one more game, and then we'll call it there for the video, but we'll be playing more counters 
uh, until we do get 10 wins on my Twitch channel. Um, what have we got here? We have seven very reasonable cards. Um, we will keep them all. Let's see what opponent chooses to do. Opponent has an amass as their turn one play. Um, what's our turn one play going to be? How does this interact? So hopefully it interacts in the right way. So I think we still want to just... Hmm, I think we lead on Pell Collector here. And then next turn, we're going to play Huatli's Raptor. Because then we get to proliferate onto our Amass, and our Pell Collector will get a counter. So the opponent plays a Druid, presumably putting a counter on itself. Yep, that's fine. So it is going to a 3-3, so this is quite a large creature. Okay, so we get to untap. We're definitely going to shock in this Temple Garden. Then our options are either play Huatli's Raptor, in which case, what do we get to do? This will go up to a 3-3 three, three at end of the turn. Pell Collector will also go up to a 3-3. Three, three. If we play Ugin's Conjurant as a 2-2, two, two, Pell Collector will still be a 3-3. Three, three. The Amass token will be a 2-2, two, two, but if we Huatli's Raptor the following turn, we get to proliferate across a wider board. It might also be worth just playing out two Conjurants on one, even though they don't trigger Pelt Collector because it lets us Jiang more profitably, although I don't think that can be correct. We're just going to make an Ugin's Conjurant on two, which will trigger the Pelt Collector, mean we are proliferating onto our entire board. We are proliferating onto our entire board, so let's see what our opponent's going to do here. I can imagine this format leading to some board stalls in situations like this. So Krasis on one. That's pretty powerful. So we draw a Biogenic Ooze. That's acceptable. So we're going to play a Forest. What are we going to do? If we play Huatli's Raptor, we get to proliferate Conjurant and Pelt Collector, which is pretty reasonable. If we play Jiang, we get to put a bonus counter on, say, Conjurant, and then also tap out and make two more creatures. If we Jiang... Hmm. If we Jiang, we do have to tap our board to make everything. But then next turn we do get to play, like, Nissa and Ooze and just go wide, right? Which is kind of absurd. And Krasis doesn't kill Jiang because he goes back up to three. So we'll play Zhang Yangu. Nice we'll make Ugin's Conjurant, I think, just for one. Then we'll make Huatli's Raptor. We will proliferate onto the entire board. Then we'll put a counter onto this Raptor. And then we get a lot of value there. Then we'll see what opponent's turn is. Our turn next turn's pretty good between Nissa and Biogenic Ooze, you'd assume. Then we just hope Nissa survives to allow us to run away with the game from there. But this is certainly the closest of the three games, I think, so far. Mowu. Mowu's fine, right? Mowu does nothing here. No offense, opponent. Um... So what do we have? We can have a 5-6 Raptor. Do we want to start simplifying the board? I don't really think so. I think we just want to play Nyssa. Um, Nyssa, untap, Temple Garden, lets us make how much mana? Four. Oh, so we don't actually get to play Nyssa and Biogenic Ooze this turn. So that's awkward. So maybe in that case, we just make an Incubation Druid and put a counter on it. And just, like, send with some stuff? We could send with Conjurant and Pell Collector. I don't hate that. Making opponent block with some things. Um, yeah. So we'll start by attacking with these. Let's see how opponent wants to block. Because we have more creatures, I think it benefits us if opponent kind of trades off here. They choose not to, which is fair enough. The fact they chose not to, does that incentivize me to play Biogenic Ooze this turn, rather than Nyssa? Probably, because I want to be able to attack with the Ooze. Um, so we'll play Biogenic Ooze. 
We're going to put a counter on this ooze. And then we're going to get our triggers. Then we're going to pass. So again, our Pollen Bright Druid is fine. It probably puts a counter on Mowu. But it just makes Mowu a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, and we have 7 creatures, about as 5 blockers. Ooh, that's probably good if it proliferates. Okay. So this Krasis is kind of important. If Krasis attacks Yang Yang Gu, we could have a problem. Okay then. Okay then. So. I still think we kind of have to attack with everything, right? We're at 18 though. So I'm if we attack with everything. Opponent has three creatures that can eat... Well, yeah. Eat three of ours. And then... I guess Biogenic Ooze can make another Ooze. We don't, if we don't attack with Ooze, though, the attack gets worse, is the thing. But we don't really want Ooze dying, do we? Hmm. I don't really like the idea of just passing indefinitely, though, while the opponent's board is larger than ours. But I guess we have Ooze for inevitability. We could just make an Ooze and get some more counters. And then this Krasis eventually has to block. And maybe we'll draw mana for Nyssa. And then when we do, we get even more value. Yeah, we've lost Yang Yang Goo, so I think we just make an ooze and pass. Although Mowu is going to get indefinitely large. But this is fine. We now have eight attackers. Uh, so currently, eight damage gets through on an attack. Shark to crab. Well, I'm glad there's no counters on this crab. Let's put it that way. So we draw Forest. That's pretty good. So if we play Nyssa... And we... Untap a Forest. So what's our attack look like here? Opponent has seven blockers. We have nine attackers. We get through for six and presumably lose a large chunk of our army. But if we get through for six, the opponent hasn't traded for the ooze, so what's the next biggest creature? The opponent goes to five. Yeah, I think... Again, what we probably just do... Well, if the opponent can put counters on Shark to Crab, it's a pooper. I think we just play Druid and pass again. Because we are currently getting more value off these triggers in terms of outsizing our opponent. Shark to Crab is a problem. I forgot Adapt was a thing. Well then. Okay. And it gets to trigger again. Jeez. That's pretty good. But, if Krasis comes in, opponent has seven blockers... We'll have eight creatures, and we get to plus and make one. Hmm. I think we're still probably okay, given the amount of oozes we can spit out. So the Conjurants are tapped. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So opponent can just block our attack. So that's not happening. Krasis keeps coming at Nissa, that's kind of a pain. Um... So, ooh, Pollen Bright Druid. We definitely want to put a counter on Incubation Druid. That's fine. What we then want to do is tap some green mana, use Nyssa to untap a forest. So that's four mana. Activate Biogenic Ooze. Make an Ooze. Um, we can make how many more Oozes? One more Ooze? if we make an ooze, it's going to get a counter now. It's probably a good idea to make another ooze now. Actually, we have Incubation Druid lives. So we can make another ooze now. And then we pass. So we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 creatures. Versus 8 and a tap. So... Um... Six of them, seven of them get through, and they all have at least three power. So this should be lethal then. This has gone down, but I don't really care at this point. I think we've done the maths right. Even with a shark to crab tap, we should have lethal. 
And um, we'll just play Raptor and see if that changes any maths. But this should get us there. So between Nyssa and the power of Biogenic Ooze, I think with our board of tiny, tiny creatures, we're going to get there. And if we're not, I don't want to know about it. Math is for blockers. But no, we do indeed get there. So 3-0 oh in the Commence the Endgame event so far.